In this demo, I'm going to show you how to convert an existing classic simple XML dashboard to Dashboard Studio and how to leverage Dashboard Studio to more effectively communicate the data in your dashboard. This dashboard provides an overview of my e-commerce website health with business metrics such as the number of customers and orders, user experience indicators like errors and latency, and server requests. While this dashboard is good, I still want to take advantage of Dashboard Studio's custom layout abilities to group relevant information together and make the dashboard easier to read. By selecting Clone in Dashboard Studio, I am using this classic dashboard as the basis for my new dashboard, rather than having to rebuild it from scratch. This action will make a clone of the dashboard and convert the clone, meaning that this original classic dashboard is left intact and available for others to continue using until I'm done updating the new Studio version. I like to name my clone dashboards with Studio or V2 or something similar in the title so I can easily distinguish it from the original classic dashboard. As you can see, all the charts and searches from the classic dashboard have been converted over to the Studio dashboard, saving me a lot of time from having to rebuild those from scratch. I'm going to start by condensing the single values and line charts together since they represent similar information. I'm going to arrange them so they look like one visualization by making the line chart look like a trend line. First, I'll remove the title and change the background to transparent using the configuration panel. As Dashboard Studio continues to evolve, you can expect more options to be surfaced here in the configuration panel. You can also edit visualizations directly via the source code, which I will do here to hide the axes and grid lines. You can find a full list of supported options in our documentation. As you can see, as soon as I edit the source code, the changes are immediately reflected in the visualization. And this source code box is available for inputs and data sources as well. For the single values, I'm going to make the background transparent like I did for the line charts, but rather than editing one by one like before, we're going to do this in source code using defaults. Dashboard defaults is an easy way to apply a configuration option to multiple objects at once. At this time, defaults can only be configured in the source code. I'm creating a new stanza here that basically says that by default, all single values should have a transparent background. Now when I return to the UI editor, you can see that those changes have been applied to all single values. And now it's time to assemble these visualizations together. To make bulk changes, you can multi-select or click and drag to highlight multiple objects and then perform bulk actions. Using the configuration panel, you can specify size or alignment. You can also move multiple objects at once. As you can see here, Absolute Layout provides a lot of flexibility for pixel-perfect placement and sizing of visualizations, but it does usually require iteratively making adjustments to get the look and feel that you want. Next, I want to move this visualization title elsewhere, but by default, the visualization title is constrained to the top left corner. So I'm going to use a markdown text component for a custom label that I can move anywhere. To add our format text, you will use the configuration panel on the right. To speed up the process for the other two visualizations, I'm going to clone the markdown component I've already added rather than starting from scratch. And finally, I'm going to add a rectangle as a background for my new combined visualization. This helps to give the appearance that these three objects are just one visualization. You can adjust the layering of any object on your dashboard by moving it forwards or backwards. And similar to before, I'm cloning the existing rectangles I have rather than adding new ones and having to reapply the same configurations. In order to visually group these three KPIs together as related information, I'm going to use yet another rectangle. And then I'm going to add another markdown component so I can add a label and descriptive text to help others know that this section is all about website traffic and orders and that it's only showing data for the last 24 hours. And then voila, we have our first category of website health metrics done. And this is a good point to make sure that we save our work.
Next, let's group our user experience metrics together. There are a few things I want to point out here. This single values background was originally transparent because it's following the default setting I applied earlier. But I actually want this background to be white, so I override it by simply selecting a different color in the configuration panel. You can always override default settings by specifying something different like I did here. The other thing I want to point out is that the layout flexibility in Dashboard Studio makes it a lot easier for me to configure layouts that weren't possible in classic simple XML, as you can see with the various sizes of my chart and how I've been able to place them wherever I want. Once again, I'll quickly group these charts together with a rectangle and a label and shortcut my way there by cloning what I already have in the dashboard. The last section to add is to monitor server requests and responses. I only have one chart here for server requests and I want to create another chart to show server responses. When you add a chart, you can add a new search or use an existing search. Unlike in classic dashboards, searches in Dashboard Studio are separated from visualizations. That means that you can save your SPL even if you're not using it and you can reuse one search for multiple visualizations. Since I don't have a search for the server responses, I will create a new one by creating a new chain or post-process search. The data source manager makes it easy to see and manage all of my dashboard searches in one place. To match the aesthetic of the chart above, I'm changing the stack mode to stat and hiding the x-axis title. It's a small change, but it ensures my end users won't get distracted with inconsistencies and can instead focus on the content in the dashboard. We'll group these charts together in a new server requests section and make some final adjustments to the layout and spacing before moving on to adding some interactivity into our dashboard. I'm going to configure a drill down to set tokens on this first chart so that when I click on a column, it will set a token value to be the selected web server name. Then I'm going to pass this token value into the next chart so that it will show me the response codes for the selected server. Including it in the title makes it easier for whoever is reading the dashboard to have more context about this chart. After adding this token to the chart's search, I'm going to save my progress and go to the view mode to test it out. As you can see, now when I click on this first column chart, the second column chart updates accordingly. Now let's revisit our original dashboard to compare it to our new Studio dashboard. As you can see, Dashboard Studio makes it easy to customize the layout and look and feel of the dashboard to make it easier to read. And by converting from an existing classic dashboard, we saved ourselves a lot of time by not having to rebuild everything from scratch.